Welcome everybody to the new Homes and Interiors show just launched today and we are going to kick things off here today with our first talk which is going to be on Influencer Insight, am I correct? Ooh, yeah. And I'm going to be talking today to Ellie and Sally. So yeah, let's, let's start off. So we've got uh, Ellie and Sally here, two very completely different styles. I think the best thing would be if I ask you to describe your own styles. Um, if, Ellie, if we start with you, yeah. if you could maybe just give us a little bit of background about how long you've been involved with social media, what your style is and how you've built your audience. And then I'll take the same question to Sally. Mm -hmm. Um, hi everyone, I'm Ellie Fenlon. I run Fenlon Interiors. I started my page five years ago um, and it's all been a very much happy accident as social media usually is. Um, I've also been able to run a podcast during that time as well, which I'll speak about later. Um, I've also run a TikTok account, which again we're going to speak about because I feel like TikTok is so underrated. Um, my style is very much minimal, very Scandinavian, um, quite simple. Um, compared to Sally, <laughs> polar opposites. Um, I absolutely love every aspect of interiors and I love the social side of things and getting into the influencer industry. I think it's really important both for yourself and for your business as well. And just to kind of put people in the right sort of uh, mind space about how your, design, uh, how your design is, can you give us maybe an example of a couple of your favourite brands? Oh gosh, that's a I'll big question. I'll come back to you on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Sally, uh, if you could introduce uh, your social accounts and just the same thing, if you could tell us how you got to where you are and tell us a little bit about your style and uh, who you've worked with. Hello, um, my name's Sally. Um, I am an interior stylist and interior designer. Can you hold that mic up a little bit? Just hold it a bit closer to your mouth. Sorry, is that better? Um, so I'm Sally. I'm an interior stylist and designer. I... Um, run an Instagram account called Sally Does Sassy where I showcase my home which is um, as, it's very different to Ellie's style. It's maximalist, it's eclectic, it's a very um, almost a faded glamour kind of look and through my Instagram account which I've been running for five years I have learnt to um, work, I've worked with brands um, I learned that people very much liked my style and wanted to buy into the products I was putting in my home um, and through that gradually built up um, my own brand where I, I showcase pieces of work for, for lots of brands, um, big brands. I also like to showcase small businesses and give them the exposure that I think they really need these days on social media. Great, so that's fantastic. So could you give me an example of the kind of brands that, that you think are doing really great things at the moment? Oh gosh, um, from a social media point of view, um, I think a lot of the new brands that are coming um, onto our radar are doing brilliant things. There's a company called Glasset, which is like an umbrella company for lots of small independent brands. And I think they're absolutely amazing. When you look at their website and their social media, it's like going to an artisan um, showroom or a little market and beautiful, beautiful um, pieces of pottery and cushions and textiles. I think they're fabulous and their interior um, Instagrams are very, very good as well. Great. So what I really like about your accounts and about your background is that you both kind of accidentally became Instagrammers. So you started with projects, you started posting to social media. I think you, you were working in, were you doing window design, Ellie? Yeah, so I was a visual merchandiser at HomeSense. Um, and I used to be in there every day, I'm sure everyone knows it. Um, and I used to post everything that came in as soon as it came in and everyone was obsessed and addicted and wanted to know what was going on. Um, and then I did all the sets for people, um, for customers when they come in. Um, and created kind of a hype and started posting it on my socials and then, yeah, just fell into, into this. <laughs> so, so, and you started posting and you can't, you, you can't, what they did, they organically grew an audience. And this, this strikes me as being, you know, this, this gives you an air of authenticity that, because there's so much falsehood and fakeness within the social media sphere, especially on platforms like Instagram. So you kind of get people who set out to be influencers. And I don't know, I mean, how do you feel about the term influencer? Um, in itself, it's, it's fine. I think everybody is an influencer. Um, 
if I see a lady in a nice dress, I would say to her, oh my gosh, I love your dress, where's that from? And oh, it's from so-and-so. And I'd think, oh, I'm going to go and look at that, I like that. So we are all influencing each other. But I think it has got quite... Um, it, it's not a compliment to be called an influencer, I think, these <laughs> days. I um, prefer to call myself a content creator because oh, yeah. that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm working in a partnership with a brand. I have a contract. They, they want me to produce a certain standard of, of work. They want me to, um, they want to use my audience. I have 120,000 followers who follow me for because they like my style um, and that's a huge responsibility so it, it's not I'm not influencing people I'm showcasing a brand's products in my home and it's, it's a formal contract mm. Excellent How do you feel about the term Ellie? Um, I don't like it being called one only because I think it does have quite a negative connotation because of like programmes you watch on television um, you know like Love Island or something mm. and an influencer comes out and the maid and they get the brand deals and there's people like us who work hard and I suppose you wouldn't think negatively of someone if they were creating like a billboard you know it's just the same I'm creating a billboard but I'm just putting it on my social screen you're not seeing it when you walk on the streets you're just seeing it when you scroll on your phone so it's pretty much the same job it just seems to have like a negative vibe about it but we just work just as hard kind mm -hmm. of thing in creating you know and some videos and you know reels as you know it's a job in itself for brands for companies like it can take a day or two just for one video and you know five seconds real and it fails and you're like oh do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's really difficult I um I, but i don't I, like the word <laughs> right no it does have, like you say it does have very negative connotations and people are moving away from that now towards content creator which is you know it feels a, a bit more acceptable um so yourselves your own styles what influences you i'll, I'll go to ellie with that first if i may um probably the job role that i did um i personally feel like minimal just works for me i prefer like a clean space i feel at most at home in that but I just value other interiors as well. I think sometimes it can be dismissed just because you might live in a minimalist or a maximalist space. It doesn't mean you can't recognise um, other interior themes or whatever that may mm. be. Um, probably inspiration, social media, I love it. Um, Pinterest, I love. Um, coming to shows like this are amazing for new ideas. Um, and just following people that you like, you know, who are in your sort of niche and when you're scrolling, getting a train to work, whatever it may be, you're always inspired. So I think social media is a really good platform for being inspired. And it's people like us, other influencers who've like just started and designed the home. You're going to be nosy. You want to see what they're doing today. You want to see what they're designing, that big renovation project. So I, I love that side of it. Brilliant. That's, that, that's, so that's kind of where you look. So you look on social media, you look at um, shows like this. Yeah. Sally, any different for you? Where do you find your inspiration? Because you've got a very different kind of style yes um my style is um maximalist it's eclectic um it's a very layered look i i like lots of things i like my spaces and the spaces i design for clients to be cozy um i like to um if i'm working with somebody i want to pull out their um personality i want to know what makes them tick there's no point me going in and saying we're going to do this this and this it needs to be a space that somebody feels completely comfortable in mm. um if people want to work with me the chances are they like a maximalist style so um i i like um working with a pretty much paired back um color palette but i like adding textures i like look adding reclaimed furniture things that maybe have been passed down through a family through the years okay and all right so that gives us a good jumping off point actually so for you to work with a brand whether it was professionally or you find something that you like and you want to incorporate into your own schemes what does that brand need to encompass what sort of values does that brand need to have in order for, for you to find them appealing so I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go to you first this time, Sally, actually, okay. for me. Um, it has to be a, a really credible brand, um, for whether I'm buying it for my own home or for a client. Um, I, I need to know that they have got excellent customer service, um, particularly because if you're working to a deadline, you need to know that that product is going to be available. Um, I need to know there's a good ethos behind the brand, that it's a quality product, um, and that if I'm working with it for myself, that it completely fits the aesthetic of myself, my brand, and my home. Does sustainability come into your 
decision making oh process. gosh absolutely um, every every project I work on um, every room in the house has got reclaimed vintage furniture in um, and sustainability we should all be thinking about it these days whether it's buying second hand vintage or whether it's really thinking hard about the purchase that you're making um, keep away from disposable I, re I liken it to disposable fashion fast fashion fast furniture no, there's no place for that anymore. We need to be thinking about really good quality, how we spend our money, and making a considered decision, whether it be second-hand or, or a new piece that we save up for. Got you. Uh, Ellie, what sort of brand values do you look for when you're buying or deciding to work with someone? Yeah, to be fair, probably very similar to Sally, but also that it reflects my page and my like values on my page like if it's just some random brand that I've never worked with and it doesn't fit well it's going to be obvious to my audience as well um, and that's just something I personally don't do because I like to keep it very organic and people follow me for me and what I provide so it wouldn't be you know and as a business if you are looking to work with an influencer you need to think about that as well because you're not only wasting your own time as well and money because you're sending them products that their audience aren't going to buy because they're not relating to that in any form so I'd probably say both ends it's what the value and the page and obviously businesses and influencers do research on one another like is that going to benefit you as both mm. oh yeah so how how important are trends to you um i mean you know we look at uh, various trend reports uh, pinterest trend reports you know pantone color of the year do you look to color of the year everybody does a color of the year um how important are trends to you sally i'll come to you first with that if i may um I'm, I'm not trend-led. Um, I, I like to keep an eye on what is out there. Um, I, ironically, at the moment, I do seem to be on trend because there's a big trend for maximalist sustained furniture, which is what I love. Um, I would strongly advise people not to buy into trends because at this, at this climate we're in at the moment, you have to really think about where your money's going. I think it is lovely to know what the Pantone colour of the year is and, and maybe give a nod to it. Um, I know it's magenta at the moment, but I'm seeing a lot of um, darker tones of that, red tones being brought in. So you can interpret a trend any way you wish. You can bring warm woods in. Um, but it's not important to be trendy. It's important to, to buy what you love and surround yourself with thing, things that you love. Okay. Okay. So for you, design is not so much of... not just essentially the visual aesthetic it's a feeling it's a, it's a feeling, it's a feeling it's it evokes in, in a space in a, whether it be a, a bar a hairdressers or um, a home right and is that the same for you Ellie? yeah I definitely I don't follow trends but I love to admire them don't get me wrong I'm terrible for buying something new in H&M home every week but <laughs> apart from that I do think it's very much it's a bit different with like fashion and interiors as you know like bringing out a colour of the year realistically you're not going to paint your house every year the, the new colour of the year. You're not going to buy that new settee. Eh? So it's about longevity. It's, you know, having a touch of that. Oh, yeah, that's in, in line with, you know, the current trends. But you've got to think long term. Like, are you going to feel comfortable with your home being full on magenta for the next <laughs> 10 years with your magenta sofa? You're not. But it's nice to just give a nod and to, re like, respect what's in it. Um, I also love Pinterest home trends. Um, their reports are always great. It just gives a nod to what's going on in society as well, you know. You're seeing this big thing about Gen Zs having a massive influence on interiors, and you're going to see that over the next five years as well with the likes of TikTok jumping in on that. Um, it's going to be so trend-led. You, you, it's going to be amazing, I think. <laughs> how, how aware are you? of the actual impact of what you do has on your audiences. Do you get feedback? Yeah. So I'll, I'll go to you first with that, if you please, mate. Yeah, um, it's very, it's exciting but scary, actually, um, how much your audience value you, what you recommend to them. What you, so going back, actually, to the brand, if I'm recommending a good brand and they turn out poor, it's a bit pointless, really. So you do have a lot of, um, what's the word, like importance to making sure you are given a good Ooh. product to your audience i don't know like you, you feel a bit like in control of that like it's scary if something goes wrong or they dislike it you feel like they might dislike you Ooh. so you do have this attachment to what you actually showcase to the audience and what, what kind of feedback do you get do you, do you and, and what what sort of products do you get the best feedback on um i think my audience like one-off 
find um, something that they can't find anywhere else um, and just anything really really nice I don't know the, mm. I create a lot of sales through my platform which is really good so I, I know that myself um, and it's really it's really nice to know that people value actually what I do and what I can showcase to them and they buy and they tag me in the pictures and they say oh I've styled it like this love your recommendation so you feel like it's worth what you're doing then right 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 and, and Sally to you as well because you've clearly got a you know an audience with a different set of uh, aesthetics how do you how do you know what sort of impact you have on your audience what how do they communicate to you what sort of thing do they say to you um well, I've been running my Instagram account for five years now, and um, it's been a very organic growth. And a lot of the people have been with me, you know, there's a hardcore of them who've been with me from the start, and they, they love my style. Um, they, they, they send you a direct message. Oh, my gosh, I love that. They'll leave you a comment. They'll buy it. Um, they'll send me photographs. Um, quite a lot of my followers have rooms exactly the same as mine, which... It's ironic, isn't it? That's what you want as an influencer, but it's also slightly alarming when you see a bit of room exactly the same. But it's brilliant. It's, it's allowing people to be brave. It's allowing people to think, oh, gosh, I like her, and I like that cushion, and I like the way she styled that, and it's giving them permission to, to go and do the same thing. Um, when I work with brands, it, as I say, it is a contract. It's not just, oh, I'm going to send you this cushion. Can, can you style it? Um, so now... You know, brands, they want to, they, they provide a clickable link. They monitor every step of the way how many, how many tables are bought, how many cushions are bought. And that's brilliant for the brand to see feedback. But, you know, you will know that if, if you post a picture of a table, the, the brand will tell you they've sold 50 tables at £500. I mean, that's amazing. Um, and it, it's because you've got to know your audience, um, which I've done over the past five years. And you've also got to... Um, be really c confident that, that it's, it, the aesthetic and the product fits completely with Sally's of Sassy, with my style. So you say you get to know your audience. How, how does that, what does that look like? How do, you, how do you get to know your audience? Oh, gosh. Well, direct messages are an amazing thing. You know, people send you messages, you chat. There's a lovely... In, the interior um, Instagram industry is lovely. It's really friendly. Obviously, there's the odd person that isn't, but for the most part, it's people are just wanting to share ideas. Um, it's very sociable. There's loads of sociable meetups that you can go to. Um, and people are just... You, you've been chatting to somebody maybe twice a month for five years you feel like you know them and they feel like they know me and therefore they trust me and, and what I'm showcasing so you have that closer relationship with your audience oh gosh some of them yes do, absolutely Ellie, do, you, do you have a relationship like yeah that? I'm like on my stories every day like I think personal branding is so important and putting your face out there as a business or an influencer and sometimes it's a bit scary like people know exactly what I've done all day <laughs> and what shops have been to and all things like that um, but I love it. I think it's so important to really interact and build that connection. It create it creates something more than what it is just social media. You know, for example, I put a product up, I've styled it. That person loves my page. They then buy it. They style it like me, and that's really honourable for you know. And you've created that you know on all your socials. And it's hard work. Don't get me wrong. And sometimes that it is an overwhelming thing to be a like, face on social media. Sometimes you want to take a week off and you can't because it's, it's your job, you know? So, yeah, but you do do quite a service, don't you? Because you almost go shopping for yeah. your, your audience, don't you? So yeah. you do it, you, is it a reel you'll do when you'll go and have a walk around HomeSense or Yeah, I do a lot of TikToks where like, I do come shop with me, see what's new in, um, and they go down a treat with the audience. Um, they just love it. Well, that's great. You're going out doing home. all the hard work and yeah. they're sat at home not having to go to the shop. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. So, 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 harking back to what you said before about TikTok. So, now, all right. Well, do you know what? Let's go through the platforms and just give me a, a yes or a no as to the relevance of them. So, Facebook. No, I don't think so now. No. 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 Sorry. F Facebook? <laughs> no. That's a really hard no, isn't it? Yeah. It's a hard can no. I, can I ask why? Um... I think Facebook is great if you want to know what your friends and family are doing. Personally, I don't like it as um, a platform for, for, for my business. Sure. And anything to add to that, Ellie? No, no it's just not for me. <laughs> just right. I don't okay. even have Facebook. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Instagram. I love Instagram, but I think they've tried to be TikTok too much, personally. They were a 
you know, a photo platform showcasing business. And then we've got the reels and other job in itself. You've tried to, I love Instagram. I still do, still will. Um, but I feel like I want Instagram to be Instagram again. Um, for business especially and for influencers and things like that. Right. Okay. Yeah, I agree. There's a big call for people for Instagram to go back to how it was in the old days. But having said that, we've all got to move. We've got to move with the times. Um, I love Instagram. It's opened so many doors for me over the years. Doors that I could never imagine being open to me. So Instagram's got a really um, fun place in my heart. I don't go on any other platforms. And there, there is a downside to that because obviously Instagram can just disappear at any moment. I have no control over it, which is bizarre when you've built a business upon it. So it's very important not to put all your eggs in one basket. I have a website, I have a mailing list. Um, it, it hasn't got 120,000 people on it, but were Instagram to disappear, I, I would know quite a few of my customers and followers. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, and you're purely Instagram then? I don't even go on TikTok. I. <laughs> Ellie's I like so Ellie, is, I, uh, is, no, not just Instagram. Yeah, so TikTok, is it all silly dances? No, absolutely not. This is what I thought, and then I started TikTok in April and got 30,000 followers in like six months, um, purely doing home interior related things. Um, it's a crazy, it's another, another universe, but it's great because you can link back. So if you've got an Instagram profile for your business and you're creating reels, just throw them onto TikTok, throw them onto your um, YouTube channel, get a YouTube channel, ASAP shorts are on the growth. Like if you're wanting to promote any service, any product, furniture, whatever it may be, just you've got one video and you've put it on three platforms. So speaking about putting your eggs in one basket, you're spreading yourself thin, which is good in this industry. So you're literally of what I've created one video. Might took you a day, great video, great concept, and you've reached so many people. Those YouTube shorts are reaching mass amounts of people. And then going back to TikTok, you are reaching not a younger audience. I'd probably say for the actual interiors, you're probably 25 plus. Um, but it's, it's just a great platform. People like to be nosy. You know, what's the behind the scenes of your business? What's the behind the scenes of your influence? And like, what are you doing day to day? Are you going on a brand trip? Like, people want to see that. People are nosy. Okay. Can we just get a show of hands? Can we, uh, who's on Facebook? I know no one wants to put their hand up, but <laughs> humor me. Who, who's on Instagram? Who's on TikTok? Oh, <gasps> He is. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. So it's, it's clearly an underused platform, but you think it's one that people should get more and more involved with, yeah. um, especially brands. I might brands. need to pick your brains yeah. on that later. That's, right. <laughs> that's great. So, and your, your, your Instagram, your TikTok, your YouTube, yeah. and podcast. Yeah. What's your podcast called? Um, the Mind of an Interior Designer. And she's after a sponsor as well. <laughs> I know, I know that. a plug there. <laughs> Great, okay. So if we could just kind of move on to the future of interior design, which is sort of, you know, the, the second part of this, taking the insight that, that we've just garnered. Um, this is a really broad question, but try and, try and answer it. How, how is social media changing interior design? And I'm, I'm going to go to you first with that, Sally, if I may. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, I think it's... Um I think it's the, a brilliant thing for interior design. Um, I, I used to buy all the glossy magazines, all the interiors magazines, and I used to love looking through them. And, uh, but they always felt a little bit inaccessible, what I was seeing there, because it was all very showcased and um, maybe high-end, and you'd had a whole team producing it. With social media, you get to look into people's homes. It's much more accessible. Um, People will look at my home, for example, and think, oh my gosh, I couldn't do that. It's so busy, this, that, and the other. But they might think, oh, I can take that part from it. And she's just a normal person. This is what her house looks like. I could have my house looking like that. And I think it's amazing. I think it's opened up interiors for, for everybody, absolutely everybody. So it, it's essentially, it allows us all to be nosy neighbours and peek through the windows. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's great. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. Ellie, do you have any additional thoughts on that? Um, I'd say a lot of it, lockdown, you'd probably see the same, created a lot of difference for the interior world. Like, I think it was so underrated. No one cared about it. You know, you just went home, you went to work, and then actually you thought, oh my God, I'm here for 24 hours, seven days a week for about six months. And I hate everything about my house. So social media made everyone be nosy. What's this person doing in their house? What are they doing? And, you know, you 
started creating actually a bit of a hype in the interior industry, which I thought was amazing. And finally, people were recognising actually house design is just as important as what I'm wearing going out every single day. And I love that side of social media and I just love... I'm excited for the future of interior design. I really am. I think it's going to be amazing having that social media element a part of it. Brilliant. So, putting it in quotes, um, so social media is basically making design more accessible for quotes normal normal people or people who aren't traditionally or professionally involved in creative and design industries and that's got to be a good thing but what what does that mean for brands how how do brands react to that and i'm going to go to you ellie please speaking of which actually you know going back to me shopping at h&m home you know i don't know whether you've seen 55 south which is in here so they're actually putting their products now on h&m home which is available to anyone to buy online great for them to do that because you've got the likes of me an influencer i post their product they might actually get more sales through me than they would from just one interior firm who, who can't so i think it's amazing i think brands should be doing that more cluing into things like that and um, that's probably where futuristically it'll be going i think it won't just be accessible to big interior firms and you know seen as hoity-toity or whatever i think it will be in the everyday person's house and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because house is a house you know mm. Cool. Sally? Um, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing for brands to be involved with. And um, anybody can make a, a reel on Instagram. You don't need a huge production team behind you. So you don't need to think that, oh gosh, the John Lewis's are doing, doing this and everything. It is a small brand. You have still got the same um, access to your phone. You can make reels. You can launch yourself on social media. Um, I think it's, it's accessible for every brand. And I think if you're not on social media, you're really missing a trick, actually. Oh. Mm. But it's easy to dabble, isn't it? Absolutely. It's easy yeah. to dabble. What's the difference between dabbling and doing it well? Commitment. Consistency. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Consistency. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and what does that... So how much of your time is taken with your, your, your social media accounts? Um, all day, every day. I wake up, my phone to my hand. I'm doing something to do with Fenland Interiors. Mm. I do eat, sleep, breathe, everything about it, but... It's not. It doesn't feel like work, and that's that's the lovely thing about it. It's it's my life. Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm lucky in that sense. So I am very grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I spend a ridiculous amount of time on my phone. Um, it's not the it's not me telling the children to get off the phone. <laughs> it's vice versa. But but that's that's my work. It, it's twenty four seven. It's um my my work is all through my phone. It's through social media, whether it's clients for styling jobs or interior design jobs or promoting my Instagram account. It's it it's constant, and you you can't just well you can of course you can just dip in a bit and dip out of it. But but to be um to keep the dreaded Instagram algorithm going, you have to be consistent on there and you have to dedicate yourself to oh. it and give the time to it. Great, okay. So I'm just going to, I've got one more question that I'm going to ask and then I'm going to open it up to any questions uh, from, from anybody there. Um, so essentially, what's the, what is the future of interior design? Is it uh, a painting with a broad brush like we've traditionally done? Because it sounds like it's going to become more and more niche as people find their own, their own influences, essentially? Um, no, I don't necessarily think it's going to be niche. I think the interior of inter the, the future of interior design is exciting. I think it's accessible for everybody. Um, I was at a dinner party the other day. We live in a really rural community, and an old guy there who you would think would never be interested in interior design came up to me and wanted me to ask him about, he wanted to know about wallpaper for his house. So I think it's, it's exciting. It, it, the future is it's there for everybody to take part in, okay. and, it, it, and people are embracing it. I think it's exciting. Okay. Okay. Ellie, any additional thoughts on that? I just think it's going to be really exciting myself. I love it anyway. Um, as we said before, we've been doing our pages for like five years and just seeing things grow in that sense anyway. You just think, wow, what's the next five years going to be? Like, you know, we've got added TikTok. Is there going to be another social media platform for a business to, you know, overlook? <laughs> You're going to have to think about that in your business. Um, in terms of design, again, it's going to be ever changing. It always is. And I'd like, I know it's never going to get there, but, you know, I was talking to you yesterday about, like, you know, we see fashion and catwalks, and automatically a week later, it's on the shelves. Like, unfortunately, you don't see that in furniture because it's got more longevity, but it'd be nice to see more 
more of that, you know. Well, so that a term that Sally used earlier was fast furniture. Yeah. Right, okay. But that's going to bring certain sustainability issues with it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, Unless in terms of, like, trends yeah. more so, I feel like we see a trend in interiors now, and it won't be in wherever for another three years. Mm. Like, mm. it's where we don't pick up on it as quickly. I don't, I don't think, personally. I'd like that to be... Well, maybe, maybe we could do fast furniture. Maybe we could 3D print furniture out of sustainable material. That's a good idea. Wouldn't like surprise that. me. <laughs> yeah. So, re recycled, repurposed, um, second-hand furniture products. What's your take on those, um, Sally? Um, every room in my house has got um, reclaimed furniture. Um, it's one of my favourite things to do. In fact... Um, my favourite shop to go to is a furniture warehouse clearance place a few miles from me. And it, it's fantastic. It's got so much um, stuff in it, just stuff. And um, you can always find something amazing in there. I've got two beautiful walnut, massive walnut burr wardrobes in my bedroom. They were £40 each. You've, you've got to put the time in to look. Um, but gosh, yes, definitely. Or always have reclaimed. Because some things come and go in fashion, but... The, the, the things that people seem to want to get rid of these days are so beautifully made and that there's a place for them in a house, definitely. And what about the Scandi Japandi aesthetic? Does that, does that have a place for second hand? It does. Not, I personally don't. I don't know if that's just my, um, mm -hmm. my shopping habits. I don't know. Um, I love, like, you know, I don't know if anyone like has watched um, Sophie Patterson. She does a lot of YouTube videos and her house is all kitted out with all new things. And she goes to this cupboard and she says, oh, these, all these pieces tell a story. And I, I do love that aspect, you know, having things in your house that tell a personal story for you, whether it be vintage or we got this from here. I love the story side of things. But I am terrible for buying something new. I can't, I can't help myself. If something comes in and it looks amazing and it's gorgeous, I, I just need to buy it. So mm -hmm. I am very much influenced. I think that might be part of my job, though. Mm -hmm. If something new comes on and it's put on Instagram stories, I'm like, no, I need that right now. So I do have that buzz but i think i create that buzz for other people as well so yeah. that's, that's great like. so you like stuff that's got a story and you like the way it makes you feel yeah you know? um second hand um, reclaimed furniture's also got a story you know you've got a lovely old mm. dining table you know, how many people have sat around this in the, what, what can it tell so yeah i like it to feel cozy um and 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 loved really brilliant and and, and what's your favorite shop ellie to go around Oh, well, I'm biased. I work for Home Sense, so I'm sorry, I'm going to say Home Sense. <laughs> and is yours the furniture? Well, um, I like the, my second hand furniture place, but um, Liberty London has got to be my favourite shop of all. It's just an emporium of gorgeousness. <laughs> Fabulous. So, yeah, if you could um, just let people know your um, your social media accounts, if you go first, Ellie. Yeah, to mind, at Fenland Interiors, I'm on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Pinterest and I've got a podcast as well, The Minds of an Interior Designer, so make sure you give that a listen. So Fenlon, F E N L O N. Interiors. Interiors. Okay. And, and Sally? Um, my Instagram account is called Sally Does Sassy. Sassy, S A S S Y. Yes. So that's Sally Does Sassy. Uh, fantastic. If you could give me a follow as well, at JWCPR, because I've only got 400 followers. It's, <laughs> it's awful. Um, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you all. Thank you thank all for you. coming. Uh, thank ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Sally and Ellie. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much.